Now this right here is a flight simulator gaming desk. It's not necessarily big and it's very much full of cable. Other than that, it is as empty as hearts of women. Anyway, today we're going to air busify it. And you know probably what this video will be about mainly. Let's go ahead and put some Airbus things on it because nowadays we can build our Airbus home cockpit for an affordable price. And we're starting off with this Chinese Win Wing autopilot panel, which was released last year and kind of changed the whole world of flight simming, to be honest. What is this, like $350? So let's go ahead and put it on. USB-C, I'll buy it like that everybody 50 shades of airbus this thing is an overhead panel just a few weeks ago we talked about it it's made by the company of rosefire and it's i'm holding it wrong that's the way you hold it as you can see it has a rosefire logo on it also from china it costs like what 250 dollars as far as i remember let's go ahead and use the bc fire as well yeah place it place it right here one of the most important electronic devices for flight simming actually is an fmc i think this is the mcdu also made by win wing and it's like a hundred and something dollars it's absolutely insane and it's very necessary there's nothing worse than being in the flight sim and having to use these buttons with your mouse this is a lot faster. Nice. I mean, who wants a, like a, a virtual keyboard and you can actually place it like vertically. But you know, all these things I've already talked about on the channel. This one a year ago, this one also last year. But everybody, the company of Win Wing just came out with some very game-changing flight simulation solutions, I think. So let's go ahead and check it out. Now, what is in this mysterious Win Wing package? I do have to say, of their, the product packaging, this is not, it's not necessarily romantic. USB-C cable. Aha! Uh -huh. And this one I actually haven't talked about, even though it's actually already a little bit old. Let's go ahead and unwrap this boy. Oh yeah. Now the Ursa Minor joystick was released last year already and it costs below $100. As you can see, something that's nice is that this one is meant to be used for the left hand, which makes you feel like a proper captain now. And actually I was wrong. This thing is 61 euros and it really doesn't feel bad. Of course it's made out of plastic. But what I like about this is that it has a trim um, button for airplanes that do have trim. The Airbus planes, because they're fly-by-wire, don't have it, so they just have a cover here, which is magnetically held in place, and so you don't have to use it. And it feels nice. It won't be your Moza racing Airbus joystick with a force feedback engine, but I think it's definitely usable. Also, we should definitely get rid of these right here, the kind of gluey thing, so that is actually held in place well and doesn't move about. This is good. Once again, 60 bucks for this is uh, actually pretty crazy. That's pretty insane. But everybody, it's about time we get to the elephant in the room. In fact, it might be the elephant of the year. The Ursa Minor Throttle. I don't know why you would name a product like this Minor. Uh, I'm not going to say I like Minor. A new product that's been now available for pre ordering 233 euros for a metal throttle that resembles an Airbus quite perfectly. Something we definitely haven't seen before, especially with the competition of maybe Thrustmaster who did the Airbus throttle a few years ago, which wasn't much cheaper. So let's go ahead and take a look if this belonged in your Christmas wish list. So let's do it. Okay, time to look at the throttle. Okay, remove it out of the box. And here comes Yes, the Wing Wing Throttle, ladies and gentlemen. If you were for some reason to buy it as just the throttle, it will be $126, and it feels very, very good. Listen to those audible detent clicks. Climb. Good. And this, for the price, is pretty insane. Although I do have to say, it's not fully made out of metal. This right here is definitely plastic cover. The engine control buttons are made out of plastic. But what I like is the fact that they have a sort of confirm switch right here. You can't just, you can't just move it. You have to pull it up. There's a safety mechanism. This is the um, engine mode switches and they're definitely nothing too special, but not bad at all. Now, mechanically, this is done relatively well. What Thrustmaster didn't have is sort of a reverser axis right here, which you do here to do reverse thrust. In order to use those, you have to lift the flaps and then pull it out. And when you go back to idle like this, as you can see, the reverse thrust unemploys. Uh, un I'm unemployed. Now, what is this right here? It says on off, but it's just upside down. If you're from Australia, you can probably read this quite well. What this does is it turns on and off these details. So let's go ahead and turn it off. 
Yeah, no more D10s. And this will be nice for like being able to fly Boeing planes, which will probably be a pretty dumb idea anyway. But hey, okay, hey, that's good. Now this right here is some scrolling wheels with which you can change the sensitivity of the whole thing. And you can really set the sensitivity so that's a really, really good smooth feel. I mean, look at the smoothness of this. Smooth. Yeah. Smooth. Oh, yeah. Uh, one more. Ah. Now, once again, I'm actually, this is, this is not necessarily made out of metal. It's out of really good plastic. It's just a base that has some metal waiting on it, which I don't really mind. It's a good feeling plastic for 160 euros, by the way. Now, let's go ahead and prepare for connecting it up. This USB type C cable has some sort of a, like an angle to it. So it can be placed just like under here. So that makes sense. Now, what else is... Ah, uh, and the whole shipment. Ah, uh, oh yes. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. The Winwing 32 PAC metal, which makes up 106 euros out of the whole package. And this is really special. Now, is it metal? Uh, this is not. This is... Uh, I'm not sure sometimes this is like really good plastic, so it doesn't really matter. This is, as you can see, the spoiler, which in order to put out, you have to like push down, right? Yes, yeah, so we have the safety mechanisms. And even here, we have detent. Yeah, and here we can arm it. And here we can disarm it. Here's the parking brake, which we have to pull in order to use. Otherwise, it won't move. That is great. Now, is this made out of metal? Probably, probably not. It's a bit flimsy, but it's... It's a really good product. And this one is also not made out of metal. It's the rudder trim. Now, flaps, meme shows, as they say in France, we have the safety mechanism. In the way that we have to pull this thing up in order to move the throttle one step. And that is nice. It just doesn't just move. You have to really pull on it. And this really gives you a good haptic idea of what it's like to fly an aerobus. Now, let's put this back to zero. And we have to somehow put these parts together. How would that work? So how does this be put together? You just slide it in like that? That's what she said. Uh, but before that, screw this. Aha, uh -huh. perfect. And this is now definitely, this is connected. This is a well-connected Airbus throttle. Now let's make it work. We have some little cables right here that we, uh, I think this is a replacement cable for if anything breaks or if you want to expand anything, but we will definitely need this SATA type cable. And so what we need to do, plug this in right here. Perfect. And this here, let's connect these pieces together. Come on. Perfect. Goes in here. And let's also connect this angled USB-C cable. Perfect. Bring it over there. Nice. Look at this unit, ladies and gentlemen. And we can just place it right here at, at the edge of our table. And actually, it does sit quite nicely here. It is relatively stable and secure. Now, something else that they're selling is a proper throttle desk mount for 34 euros, by the way, which is crazy because it's all automated metal. And this is a way to like properly securely put this thing on the table, which will be very interesting once Wind Wing comes out with the other stuff they're planning, you know, like the radio panels, I guess. Other than that, to be honest, for now, I will probably not need this. I will just put this here. It's pretty secure because it's so heavy on the table. And look what plugging it in looks like. Everybody backlit. And this really changes the setting. It's like putting lights or candles on a Christmas tree. It's the thing that makes, I don't know, that's a stupid analogy. Look at this. Full on backlight. And we even have a screen that will show the rudder trim very interesting. Now, look at this pride and joy, ladies and gentlemen, an Aerobus setup. And it's now time to see how well it works. So, I mean, this thing has a screen, right? So we would probably need definitely the software of WinWin. They have their own software called SimApp Pro, whereas our overhead panel from Rosefire has to use Moby Flight, but that's okay. But as you can see, the rest of the things, the WinWin stuff, the MCDU, the autopilot panel, as well as the joystick, as well as the throttle has been connected. I might want to move the throttle a little bit closer because my, my wingspan isn't that good. Look at that. That's perfect. Other than that, for especially the WinWin stuff, we didn't have to do any crazy installing other than the connecting software. So that's pretty good. Let's see if it really works out of the box. We're just going to spawn into a Phoenix A320, which is, I guess, one of the aircraft that is supported here. I'm honestly not sure which airplanes are exactly supported. They say all features perfectly match the logic of any builds, Phoenix and similar aircraft. I guess it just works with a lot of them. So let's go ahead and use Phoenix. This plane right now is turned off. And what I like to see is all that my, all my instruments are turned off because Wind Wing out of the box just works. Let's go and turn on the airplane. 
turn on the batteries, turn on the APU. Oh, and by the way, I've just realized this. As you can see, this thing doesn't have stickers on yet. Luckily, we have a lot of them here. Up to four engines. Obviously, if you're flying in dual throttle things, so four throttles. And it glues on nicely. Uh, that makes a big difference right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at that. Oh, let's not have these engines start to turn on. We're just going to turn on external power right here, which obviously brings on the lights. It brings on the MCDU, which as you can see, it, uh, how does it work? Uh, well, let me just say it works as well as the lights, but you will figure that, well, you can't actually use anything yet. Well, it does show the actual setting of the rudder trim, for example, like right and left, which is really, really cool. And it will even adjust its brightness according to how you set it in the flight sim. That's pretty damn awesome. You won't have these controls automatically, you know, matched. So we have to do that ourselves. <laughs> See, this should work now, and, and it does. Look at that, this Airbus is working fine. As you can see, engine start also works. As you can see, the flaps come down nicely. Good, but most importantly, the throttle works. Well, kind of, almost perfectly already. As you can see, setting climb says climb, setting MCT6, MCT, and here's Toga. So this already works quite well. Something we don't have properly yet is like the idle. We do have reverse, now we don't have that. And in order to do that, you know, we kind of need to go into our MCDU right here. Atsu, uh, control, aha, uh -huh. look at that. We can see our stuff. We have to calibrate it, so let's do that. Set levers to max reserve, reverse, yes sir. And toga, store calibration, wonderful. And so we've got our fully working Airbus throttle with, yes, this works and we can reset it and it comes, this is nice. Anyway, yeah, we can just spawn in with this airplane working. Let's go ahead and um, put the flaps to one. Good. Get this light back going. Hey, you know, we now have a pretty glorious throttle setup right here. We can unset the parking brake. We can get rolling. Maybe put in some engine power into the left engine. See if that works. Yes, we are very much able to. That was probably pretty dumb. And so we can go ahead and fly. Let's go, Toga. Let's do it. Both engines, please. Yes, yes, yes. It takes a while for them both to get up. We've got some serious takeoff uh, configuration warnings. That's okay. Let's go take off. Yeah. Now, landing gear comes up rather nice. And something I can feel is the joystick, which vibrates. Now, I want to test one more thing. You know that these right here, these little buttons, are meant to be able to show if a fire is going on. By the way, let's put the flaps up. Are meant to show if a fire comes up. So let's maybe see if what happens if we actually have a fire. Okay, failure. Fire protection. Undistinguishable fire. Yeah, fire, fire, fire. Oh no, we've got a fire. Interestingly, it just shows fault here. Well, that's kind of right, to be honest. You know, I'd have to say, if you think this will be completely made out of bare metal, you're kind of wrong. It is partly made out of metal. It's a plastic item though, just like anything else. But that isn't bad at all, considering the price and the fact that this is probably, this is the best throttle you can buy if you're an Airbus fan. No, generally, it's the best. I will be streaming loads with this. And so thank you guys so much for watching this and I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Duram, that dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishititsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.